right. Well, it's good to be with you today. Always excited to uh, get to come to churches in Iowa. Iowa is my wife's home state. Uh, she grew up uh, just east of Des Moines, uh, about 70 miles or so. So uh, we don't get up this far in Iowa real often. In fact, I think it's our second time to your church. I think we were here maybe eight or nine years ago at, on, at the first time for a Sunday evening service. But uh, we're excited to be back. Um, I do work with a ministry called Gospel Link. And uh, we have a group called the Voices of Zambia, who are graduates of our Bible college. They are called Ambassador International University. And they have been traveling around the United States since the middle of August. They started out in Los Angeles, spent a few weeks in California, a few weeks in Nevada. And they have spent the last month with my wife and I here in the Midwest. We make our home in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, we spent a couple weeks in Nebraska with them and a couple weeks now in Iowa. And uh, we appreciate your prayers. We're headed to Tennessee on, on Monday and Tuesday. And they have about six weeks left of their tour where they'll be uh, singing and sharing their testimonies and seeking to raise funds for the Bible college that they graduated from uh, during the remaining part of their tour. A couple things I want to make you aware of. We have a couple tables set up that you've already seen. There are some wooden uh, crafts on the table. Some of you have asked, well, how much are those? Well, they're just for a donation, so whatever you want to give. All the proceeds go to help pay for our tour that we're on. And uh, the purpose of the tour is to seek to raise funds for our Bible college in Zambia, Africa. So um, they go to pay for our tour. Once our tour is paid for, they go to help fund our Bible college. If you've never heard of Gospel Link before, probably the best piece of information to take home is this magazine called the Gospel Link Advance. And we have uh, quite a few copies available today on the table. And uh, I would really encourage you to pick one of these up. It's uh, our ministry is 25 years old, and we work in 17 different countries, working with church planting families all over the world, and we've seen millions of people receive Christ. We've seen about 40,000 new churches started around the world, and um, just uh, a sampling of that is in this magazine. So if you're, if you're unfamiliar with who we are, this is a great piece of literature to take home. In your bulletins today, you received a card that looks like this. And um, I'm going to be re referring to this at the end of the hour, but just make sure you know where that's at. And uh, at this time, you're in for a real treat. You're going to get to hear some music and some testimonies and a message from God's word from the Voices of Zambia. Would you please give a warm welcome to the Voices of Zambia? Good morning. It's good to be here today. Uh, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. We are called Voices of Zambia from Africa, Zambia, from Ambassador International University. It's a Bible college where the three of the men we graduated from. I graduated 2017 with him, and uh, we were together in the same class. So we studied the Word of God for four years and graduated and trained to be pastors and church leaders. So uh, let me introduce the, the, the names of the, me uh, the members of the team. On the guitar is Simon. If you can't hear my accent, you can see his name there. And uh, he's Aloysius. And I'm um, David. And uh, this beautiful lady here is my wife. That's not her name. Her name is Ida. <laughs> Ida is her name. So uh, we, we are so glad to be here today and uh, to worship the Lord with you. Although in a different different style, in an African style. So if you know any song that will be sung today, feel free to sing along with us. If you know any song in Bemba or Nyanja, just sing along with us, all right? Uh, so uh, so uh, be blessed and enjoy the music. Uh, the first song we're singing is in Bemba. It just says, Twasumbule uh, Shinarienu, Lord, we lift your name on high, trans translated in English. Uh, so... Yeah, be blessed as we minister. Twa sumbu le shinalienu. 
Wale tobu kata kuli mwe Yahweh Eh Eh Yahweh Eh Eh Twa sumbula Twa sumbule shinarienu Twa leta Twa leto wukata kuli Again, my name is Aida. I want to share my testimony with you on how I became a Christian. Uh, so uh, I was born in a Christian family, in a family where everybody at home used to go to church. So we used to go every Sunday for Bible studies and uh, services every Sunday. But I just used to go to church, but I never knew uh, who really Jesus was but I just knew Jesus by name. Uh, so um, we kept on, I kept on going to church together with my family. Okay, not until in 2012 at school, I joined a scripture union. So this scripture uni union, it was a club where uh, some students used to meet and share the word of God, sing, um, and also give testimonies. So I joined that group because it's what we used to do at home. But I I never knew Jesus Christ. Yeah, I wasn't a believer. So uh, so uh, one day one of the students in the team had to preach in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6. It says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one would, would go to my father except through me. And he also preached in the book of Revelation. He said, you have to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you won't, you go to hell. So I was confused. I thought everybody in the team was a believer, including me. Yeah, so um, I waited for him outside to ask him a lot of questions about salvation. Yeah, and um, he, when I asked him outside uh, the questions, uh, he, he explained to me 
uh, how G uh, who Jesus re is and what is salvation and everything. And by the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I gave my life to Christ. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so from that day, um, I don't go to church because of my family. I go to church because of uh, what God has done in my life and who is my Savior. Yeah. So alongside my testimony, we're going to sing a song called Shout to the Lord. It's, it has a Bemba part. It, it, it is in English and, and Bemba. One of the, so the, the two languages we speak in Zambia. Yeah. Enjoy the song. If you know it, you can sing it up.
this love of your name. The next song is uh, 10,000 Reasons, so if you don't mind, you can stand together with us to sing together.
morning again uh, just to remind you my name is David if you have forgotten that my name is David and I'm, I'm going to share with you this morning a short uh, devotion I'm coming from Zambia so uh, I'm sure you can get that from my accent right yeah and uh, uh, we, we speak a lot of languages back home so I can only speak just five of those 72 languages so when I speak in English, just remember that that is not my, m my mother tongue, right? So when I speak in English, I try to translate that into my mother tongue and bring that in into English. That's a lot of work to do. That's a lot of work. So, uh, but uh, let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the privilege of being here, God, this morning to uplift your name, oh God. Thank you for the privilege of opening up our mouth, and God, op opening up our hearts to you, Lord, and to worship you personally and through your word. Now, as we hear from your word, God, I pray that, Lord, you be able to speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we'll read this morning from the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 1 to 10. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 to 10. It's a, a well-known passage. So uh, this morning, we just uh, I'm just going to point up three things that uh, I would want us to, uh, to carry with us this morning from these ten verses. The first thing that I would want us to, to get from these verses is the characteristics of a soldier, a soldier for Christ, not uh, a soldier in the world, but a soldier for Christ, somebody whom uh, carries the message of God. Uh, and uh, what were the words that uh, Paul the Apostle Paul spoke to his son in the faith, Timothy, from these words? So the first thing that I would want us to, to get from this is that a soldier for Christ has to be strong, right? He has to be a strong soldier. And the second thing that the soldier for Christ has to be single-minded. He has to be a single-minded soldier for Christ. And uh, the last one is that he has to be strict or he has to focus on the mission that he has been called. I'm not a parent yet. I'm married. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for the reward. Yeah, so I'm not a parent yet, but uh, a lot of us in here are parents. So uh, I don't know for you uh, when that time comes for you 
when you be sitting uh, or maybe sleeping in that bed, knowing that you are going to the last or the end of your, your years here on earth, I don't know what kind of words you're going to tell your children. Think, think about that. So here is, ti- here is Paul speaking to his son in the faith, Timothy. He says to him, oh, I would love that we, we hear from the words that uh, this uh, father in the faith speaking to his son. He says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things that you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust this thing to faith for men who will be able to teach others also. Suffer hardship with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier in active, in active service entangles himself in the affairs of everyday life so that he may preach the one who enlisted him as a soldier. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer ought to be first to receive the share of the crops. Consider what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descendant of David, according according to my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not in prison. For this reason, I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they may also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus and with it eternal glory. The words of, of Paul speaking to his son Timothy. When I was going through this, uh, this, uh, these verses, one question that keeps on coming and uh, asking myself is when my time is done here on earth and I stand before God, will I be found faithful? Maybe you can take some time and ask yourself this question. When your time here on earth is done, when you stand before God, will you be found faithful? That's a, that's, that's a good question, right? But a difficult to answer answer according to how we live here on earth. God has given each one of us in here the privilege of listening to the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. And today, this morning, we are listening from the word of God. So Paul says to Timothy, you have to be strong as the soldier of God. This is one of the characteristics that uh, Paul uh, tells Timothy. Because Paul has been in ministry for many years, right? And this time, his ministry is coming to almost to the end. And he's thinking of the hardship that he has you know, has endured on earth through this same ministry. Then he knows that this young, this young son in the face that is coming, he's going to meet some. He's going to go through the same. And then he tells him to be strong. That's why I said, parents, I don't know what kind of words you can tell your children after having experience here on earth. So he says, I have experience and I've had experiences in this ministry. Therefore, you have to be strong because it won't be easy. I don't know for you, but I remember years when I received Christ in 2006, uh, somebody told me that whenever you came to know Christ, just to know that you are at war with the enemy. I don't know if somebody told you that. But just to know that really it's not, be, it's not going to be hard. I mean, it, don't, it won't be easy. But as you carry the torch of Jesus Christ, the word of God, you have to be strong because you're going to meet some opposition, which is re- happening right now. Mm. But again, if, if even though we found and meet these uh, persecutions of, or hard times, but the word of God, Paul says, it is not in prison. Meaning that the word of God is not there to be seated on. Like it's not something that you can get and just sit on with the word of God. But the word of God, when you hear the word of God, it's your responsibility and I, my responsibility to speak the word of God to somebody else, right? So the word of God is not meant to be in our churches or in our homes, but the word of God has to be heard to the end of the world. Entrust this to faithful men. Not to just anybody, but faithful. Entrust these words to those who are faithful. Those who are going to carry the word of God. Faithfully. Are you going to be found faithful when you stand before God? Am I going to be found faithful when I stand before him? Are you a faithful man? A faithful woman of the word of God? This is a good question to ask. 
That's why he says, a soldier never entangles himself in civilian activities. So you have the time as a soldier of God not to entangle yourself in the things of this world. The world today has got a lot of things that want to entice us, right? There are a lot of things that are happening in the world, the world that can mess up your mind. But one thing that we have to remember is that we are at war. There's always opposition for the word of God. But the word of God must be preached. If we get to get entangled with the things of this world, we are not going to have that opportunity of speaking the word of God. There are a lot of things happening around us. You can just see around you, around you there are a lot of things happening. This world is getting crazy, right? If anyone competes as an athlete, so he gives an example of an athlete and a farmer. Athletes, before they go for their practices or for their competitions, they have to practice, right? They have to get ready for it. They have got good attire for it. And even the farmer, the farmer, farmers, I know we have got farmers in here. For you to have good crops or harvest at the end of the day, you have to work hard, right? That's what God has got us for the word of God. We have to work really hard for it. Not for salvation, but we have to work really hard for it for us to take the word of God to the ends of the world as God has commanded us to do, as the soldiers of God. And what is the motive of that? It's not the motive of, uh, you know, I want to have the word of God for myself. I don't know here, but back home we've got uh, the people that we uh, that are, are speaking, you know, are preaching the, uh, the prosperity gospel. I don't know if you have it here, but back home we have some. Speaking the word of God for, for the purposes of yourself, that's not what God has called us for. God has called us for the ministry of God to speak nothing but undiluted word of God. To this dying world. People think that uh, we, uh, so there are a lot of things that, theories that people think that can bring hope to this world. Uh, let, let me remind you this morning, there's nothing that will bring hope in this world except the word of God. So as an athlete, you have to get ready. And the motive really is that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was Lord. And right now, he reigns in authority. And my prayer has been, God, when my time comes, that I'll be found faithful before him. Faithful in the study of his word. Faithful in proclaiming his word. Faithful in taking the word of God to the ends of the world. Faithful in standing and defending the word of God. I don't know what your answer is to that question. But will you be found faithful when you stand before God someday? Let's pray. Humbly, God, again, we come before you, Lord, with this thought in our minds that, God, we have this opportunity to uh, speak your word. And I pray that God would help us always not to be get entangled in the things of this world, but to remember that, Lord, we are at war with the enemy. And there's a lot of destruction that God can. Uh, can entangle us, but Lord, we pray that God would help us to speak your word of God and to proclaim your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen.